Thousands of years ago, glaciers carved the landscape of the northeastern U.S. and Canada. Pushing and pulverizing their way down to the sea, ice scraped off everything, leaving great shelves of granite with little for most plants to live on. Across these rocky expanses known as barrens, only a handful of plants survived in the thin, acid soil. Miraculously, one of those plants continues to thrive in the wild, creating a heritage that benefits us today, the wild blueberry. My very first memories of blueberries was when I was probably about six years old, and I was with my father. It was a family affair. The mother and the father and the kids would all go and they would pick blueberries. It was basically all hands on deck during blueberry season. Everybody can imagine in or around the family and any friends that they could drag into it would help out during August to get the, to get the crop in and frozen in time. The wild blueberry industry has been an integral part of the economy of Maine, Quebec, and Eastern Canada. Whether it's a tourist picking a handful of wild berries, or thousands of cans that have been processed to supply American troops since the Civil War. The children were able to pick enough blueberries that they would make enough to buy their school clothes. And so that's what I did with that five cents a box. I uh, bought my clothes for school. Who knows when people first ate the tasty fruit? We do know that 5,000 years ago, the Abenaki Indians of the Northeast had already noticed a curious fact. After a burn, the wild blueberry is the first plant to regrow. They were the first to burn the barrens on purpose every few years to keep out other plants and limit insect pests. Today, the wild blueberry barrens may be burned in the fall, or, if the ground is level enough, they're mowed very short to start their two-year cycle. I guess my infatuation with the blueberry industry is the actual beauty there is in the land. And the land takes on a great beauty when it's mowed and you'll see undulations in the land. And then the, the new plants come up and there's all kinds of different colors to the land. And you look, look across it and there's something that uh, it, to me, it, it gets, it gets quite deep. In the autumn, the barrens glow with an otherworldly color, a brilliant show before winter comes. Spring comes slowly to the wild blueberry barrens, but when it arrives, the burst of blooms bring the wild blueberry's best friend, bees. Wild blueberry growers bring in a workforce of 20,000 to 140,000 bees per acre to supplement the pollination of native bees and insects. The flowers vary from white to pink because each plant is actually a different type of berry. Not to be confused with larger high bush blueberries that have been selected and cultivated to make farming or selling them easier, the little low bush wild blueberry can truly be called wild. We call wild blueberries wild because we don't plant them. They're there naturally. We have huge genetic diversity in our fields, which provides a lot of uniqueness and also advantages to the growers. I don't have to worry about, you know, what plant do I have to use for a seed this particular year because Mother Nature's already chosen that for me. Unlike almost every other fruit or vegetable we eat, the wild blueberry has never been hybridized or genetically altered by man. So when the berries grow from the flowers, they vary in color as well, from light blue to dark black color. And they vary in taste from tart to very sweet. When harvested, they meld together to create that unmistakable full wild blueberry flavor. Wild blueberry farmers are a diverse bunch too, but they share that love of the land. We have wild blueberry growers that uh, vary in size from an acre or two very part-time growers to the largest berry growers in North America that manage and process thousands of acres of wild blueberries. All of these businesses to this day are still family owned. Not just a privilege, it was an honor when they did ask me if I wanted to come back and work for the family in this business. It means a, a great deal to me. It, it's amazing to think that I'm sitting in literally the same desk that my grandfather used and then my uncle, and now I'm using it. Like most of the people around here, I was born into wild blueberry farming. I'm a third generation, and 
I have, this is a, the original family homestead. My three children basically have followed my footsteps. I travel with the truck sometimes and I've met people that know my family from decades back. I've just learned a lot about my family from it. It's honest, tired work, but it pays off in the end. Like the wild blueberries themselves that have learned to survive in difficult conditions, these farming families have developed skills and traditions to make a living from the care and consumption of these little blue beauties. Yes, every wild blueberry contains thousands of years of wild culture, a living heritage you can taste.